there it is. A brave little army in your pocket. The first smokes platoon. Twenty brave souls standing in salute, ready to step into fire for you, sir. You picked the best one. This soldier is fat and succulent. What are you waiting for? Light up. Re-become yourself. Oh yes, Bratan! Please light up! You need a trooper between your lips right now! Calm your shit down! Go to Pleasureland! Become a genius! People are watching. What a pussy. People are always watching. That's what makes it cool. Now come on. Will they always be looking though? Because they might go to the toilet, or you might be in a different... Shut up and light that shit. You want to be an idiot for the rest of your life? This shit will give you the cool edge you need. Get a load of this rock and roll cop hair, people. Johnny Thundercop fishes a cheap lighter out of his pants. With a flick of the thumb, there's fire. A primal satisfaction. Here we go. The lighter's dark green disposable plastic. Safety's off. In your case, the safety is always off. Repercussions. There's a high risk of glory. With a mild chance, cool genius. Smoking makes you into an intellectual. Everybody knows that. It will help you concentrate a bit. That much is true. Thick, warm smoke gets sucked down into your lungs. Immediately, you feel a warm nostalgia fill your head, body, and soul. A nostalgia for yourself. The man you were in your youth. Johnny Thundercop is back, and he's chill as balls. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a cigarettes button. Cigarettes gives plus one to intellect skills. Logic, rhetoric, conceptualization, visual calculus, encyclopedia, and drama. This is good before a white check, but damages your health. Formative experience has ended. Good. What can I help you with? More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. These are unimportant times, Detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. For the big time. The revolution. It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real... kerfuffle. Why, of course. We're talking Duke Out Central. Full swing, intraspecies warfare. No. I would say the apes were... neutral. On the other hand, maybe you're right. No. The tiny apes are doing all they can to be better. It's not their fault. Those would be the communists. Generally speaking, 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists... They all got shot in the head. She's not gloating. It's a relieved celebration. Oh, and the anarchists too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. She likes the totality of it. Indeed. They piled them in mass graves in Ozon. And, well, that's the last anyone heard of those people. Did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. Don't worry. Klaus Mazov shot 15 million people in the head. But that was all the way over in Grad. Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head. Or thrown beneath a horse. Or drowned. Accounts differ. 
It was unceremonious. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king. Just the king's nephew. The real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. I prefer the term risk averse. King Guillaume was nobody's fool. He could smell a PR disaster brewing. So he got out alive, and his nephew Frisell got shot in his place. Him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kinsmen. It was a wild time. The liberals got the mineral rights. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. Liberals are usually middle class people, detective. Or the remaining gentry. The beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. Some were rich enough to stay with the constitution, with monarchy. Big mistake. Others bet on the revolution. They were called the ultras or ultra liberals. They fared well. They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? We. Oui. She's one of them. Of course. To foreign intervention. The coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. The liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The coalition took the ground. The ocean, the laws, and the people. The coalition of nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper. Messina, Oranje, and Sieur Le Clay, the armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. There is bitterness in her voice, tempered with understanding. She is critical, but ultimately understands the cause. The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now. The coalition government. The rulers of Revachol. And also, the world. These guys are strong. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. The color of moralism is blue. The official motto of Moral Intern, or Moralist International, is a blue forget-me-not, a piece of gray sky. Unofficial. For a moment, there was hope. A devout man of the center. Hard to come by. It's good to have someone who takes a moderate approach to head shooting. In your line of work, I mean. The turn of the century revolution? <laughs> Don't answer it. It's a trick question. The revolution began in 02, on the Isla of Grad, though by the end, nearly the whole world had gotten involved. It wasn't a who, but a what. A pandemic of Zarat, a particularly virulent prion disease, which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Mazulf came along and overthrew the government. It made people overthrow their governments. Indeed, Zerat is a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. The actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. From Revachol and Grad? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revachol commune two years later. It was the end. Why? You and I, officer. Our lives in the zone of control. Something tells you her life and yours are not that similar. Maybe it's because she has a boat and you have that necktie? A pair of pants? No doubt. But we share the same time and position on the planet's crust. 
That counts for more than you think. A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the Coalition of Nations. And you, of course, the citizen's militia. The Zone of Control is the third incarnation of Revachol, after the failure of the Suzerain and the Commune. Modernity. They develop the marvels of the inter communication. Telematic milieus, radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, in Revachol West, the aftermath continues for the fifth decade. 51 minus 8 equals 43. Time flies. The 20s saw a decade of urban war, west of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. The 30s? Things settled down in the 30s. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. No, it was a market mirage fueled by cocaine and quantitative easing. The 40s dispelled it like a cold splash, an Isla-wide hangover, you might say. And here we are. Welcome to reality, baby. From the looks of it, the 50s haven't been much better for the zone of control. You can see it in her eyes. Days slipping away. I've no right to be dissatisfied. This shirt is Barbara Muscova. This raincoat is impervious to rain and is guaranteed for a hundred years. My daughters will wear it. No, it's just... We could have had so much more. Every one of us. If only we played it right. Good question. What would you have done differently? And I asked you, past less detective of the citizens' militia, what insight has acute encephalopathy given to you? Then you would have died, most likely. Not far from here. Maybe even right here, during the beachhead, defending the coast the day the Coalition took the city. No. Almost certainly. The Commune would have forced you. Such was the fate of the Undecided. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. Anyway, enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Now's your chance. Ask her who she is. She won't get out this time. Hmm. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. I am the vilest of the vile. A traitor. A devourer of nations and infants. I am an ultra. She raises the corner of her mouth, smirking, revealing a canine. An ultra-liberal. It's a type of liberal. From the revolution. It's, uh, not the moderate kind. Haven't you heard? I am a nether creature of the Forbidden Swamp. One of those who pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. I can see you thought I'd gone extinct. No sane person identifies as an ultra-liberal anymore. Not in broad daylight. You're a centrist at heart. A real moralist. Tell me. Now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire. Decades of guilt and pride. A devil, who being of great charm and guile, sneaketh into the homes of the godly. That dialect is obeisant. You recognize it's a quote from somewhere, a play written way back in the Franco-Nigerian century. Ah, maybe you remember more than you let on. Despite whatever brain damage the alcohol may have inflicted. I hope so. I hope we are able to continue as friends despite my scaly bulk. 
And the insanity, bloodshed, and transfer of wealth that took place here. It was not the plan all along. When the dust settled, the Liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. This was all our last generation managed. With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery, I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition. Not here in Martinez, and not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either. If not for my own sake. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched. She loosens them. Then for my daughters. We had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. Dark orange flames reflect in her green eyes. An oil fire on the ocean. Perhaps. My intellectual vanity will be my undoing. You're no dummy yourself. And the crown on your head as you lay in the casket. Yes, I suppose I am. But I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. Yes, whatever else I am. I'm also a mother and a wife. Now, shall we return to reality? It remains a mystery what you mean by this something close. This isn't about you. It's about reality. A bird? A Svenicid? A flightless bird of the polar regions? Some sort of krill hunter? No, wait. You're an ancient ruin. A symbol of hubris and decay. Half submerged in some salty sea. Of course you're not, my dear. I'm just terrible at guessing games. Ah! This is the pier of Rue de Saint-Gislaine, 33A, where the tenants have been kind enough to rent me a slot. Or two. A pre-revolutionary tenement. Old buildings are called tenements, you see. And new buildings, bâtiments. After les bâtiments nouveaux. But 33A and 33B are not nouveau. They're old. This one used to be eight to ten stories tall. A real high rise by the standards of the last century. Built to mirror the skyscrapers across the bay in the Delta. That was before the war, of course. Mostly the urban middle class, I believe. This was once primo real estate. Before the cannons locked four or five stories off. Splat. You could be wrong, but from here it appears as if she's running the brush across her throat in a soaring motion. Wonderful. The girl in the old lady rags looks like a sullen and rebellious member of a teen infraculture. Yes. You and I belong to the supraculture. We're common, the herd. The music on the radio, the food in the chain restaurant, those are all too popular for the girl in the old lady rags. She prefers a fantasy world, an infraculture with its own dress code and vernacular. It is an illusion, I'm afraid. There is no refuge from the supraculture. Young people who dye their hair funny colors and wear old people's clothes are stupid, and their little rebellion is self-defeating. All right, what next? Suddenly, you're not so sure you're part of the super culture. And what would that be? She lets out an unrestrained laugh, the crow's feet stretching onto her cheeks. Nothing, nothing. It, it's just, uh, true, that's all. The uniforms, the language, 
Let's have another question about reality, shall we? Glad to have been of assistance. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Not an umbrella, I hope. I don't need one myself, you see. Sadly, I need this one myself. It's hydrophobic, repels water, almost magically. The company makes them for offshore platform personnel, very sturdy. What I can do for you is answer some questions. Nothing like talking to pass a rainy day. More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Six kilometers southwest, in the Valley of Dogs, junior officer Chad Tinbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, you heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. You? You're an officer of the RCM. Preciso Mundo. Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, detective. Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency, Wayfarer, and Aliments Acts, through pieces of legislation keeping the city in a, let's be honest, laissez-faire stasis to the benefit of foreign capital. There's nothing basic about your role, Detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way our seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachol in the 20s was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched privatization scheme, a nuclear pile meltdown. They called it the International Zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative. They will never forgive you. So permit me to conclude with this. Who you are to me is the police. The only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachol. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I'm here to help. What is all of this? The scent, the sound, the air. What world? The only one, I suppose. The world of matter and its pale antipode. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. Great bodies of water, forest covered surfaces, clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. There is a term of Indium they coin for it, in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. Elysium. Not in this case, no. That sounds more like something the Mesk petro-fascists might say. The Confederate Republic of Mesk, the world's largest state by territory, has fallen into an especially nihilistic strain of nationalism lately. It isn't enough to call us animals. 
Even animals aren't animals. They're like you and I, I suppose. Living organisms don't identify with abstractions. Elysium is for particular beings. It does. There are those who would call it hell. A term of hatred that originates like many such things with the Mesk Petro fascists. Oh, you want a picture of the world? There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. That's looking less and less likely, Detective. You wouldn't know it from the tabloids, but the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. ORG, Occident Revachol Grad. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big three, they're piecing together a dark gray corona. Yes. Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are gray flares and prominences, even arcs above entire isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. A cold fear seeps into you. You seem to be spooked. Please don't be. They say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is, if we are still living on a planet. Or, to speak more plainly, imagine vast swathes of land disrupted by nothingness. I am sorry, dear. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephalopathy. Even scientific positivism isn't entirely convinced about what we're dealing with here. But this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut, bring us together, however naive it may sound. You have misimagined it. I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's... It's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. See? Everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world. However wasted its opportunities. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there, on whatever this all is. Your arms hang down by your sides. Nothing more nor less than the de- Yes, that means not de jure. Permit me to conclude with- And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the base. The pale is not, technically speaking, part of reality. It is the opposite of reality. Okay. The pale is the most dominant geological feature of the world, detective. The separative tissue between the Islas it is the inter mass. Isola is a Mycenaean word for a continent of matter, enveloped on all sides by the pale. Also, isolation, or landmass. We used to believe there was only one. In the last four centuries, we have discovered seven. Windy, Seol, Samara, Ilmara, Grad, Katla and this in Sulinde, an oceanic isola. It comprises mostly of water. Muindi is the largest, Katla the coldest, in Sulinde the bluest. What can I say? Each is perishing and dear. Achromatic, odorless, featureless. The pale is the enemy of matter and life. It is not like any other or any thing in the world. It is the transition state of being into nothingness. The negation of being. That's right. 
the negation of being. No detective. We're safe. It begins there, 6,000 kilometers to the north, and even more to the south, east, and west. You are in the middle of the Isola. As your gaze instinctively turns north, a small black pit opens up in your stomach. Yes. That is enough. Many cities are built much closer. An uproar of matter, darling. Rising into the pale. Rolling. Evaporating, even. A great vision. The area of transition between the world and the pale is called porch collapse. Imagine a grey coronal mist, cold vapour marked by spores of an opportunistic microorganism. A mold that's adapted to grow at the edge of the unrest. It's uh, the most disco thing you will ever see. It's difficult to describe or even measure. Something whose fundamental property is the suspension of properties. Physical, epistemological, linguistic. The further into pale you travel, the steeper the degree of suspension. Right down to the mathematical. Numbers stop working. No one has yet passed the number barrier. It may be impossible. Oh, it is so difficult for us. A squall of birds. Hardware operating in the harbor. Firm. Self-evident. It is possible to force dimensions on the pale. In modern times, we can even compress its latitude. Bouncing radio waves from one end to the other. Shortening the path. But it is still hard for humans to navigate the pale without getting lost. Or having our minds damaged. Extensively. Some say the damage stems from extreme sensory deprivation. Others argue that pale somehow consists of past information. That's degrading. That it's rarefied past not rarefied matter. They call it the blend over of the self. The pale does not only suspend the laws of physics, but also the laws of psychology, maybe history even. The human mind becomes over radiated by past. It feels terrible, absolutely terrible. International standards strictly limit civilian travelers to six days of pale exposure per year. It's more for her. Way more. No nameless detective of the citizen's militia. I am a member of the entrepreneurial business class. I'm cleared and trained for 22 days of pale transit annually. Perhaps that explains her strange pining after the revolution. Some degraded early memories. She's looking out toward the sea. What at? It's hard to say. She's overradiated, and then some. Entrepreneurs is the scientific study of the pale, or a recent iteration of it by way of Grad. The study of the pale reaches back six thousand years. The Periconarsians called it the Western Plain. There are signs of pre-modern crossings. Successful navigation of the Pale relies not just on technical know-how, but intensive psychological preparation. Some of these tactics have been known for thousands of years. Nothing. We remain powerless before the Pale. The only real advance in Pale transit is the speed with which an aerostatic craft can pierce it. Less exposure leads to less... effects later. Hybrid airships, detective. Conventional rotors or jet engines no longer add velocity after the point of reference for motion is suspended, once you've crossed from near pale to far pale. In essence, we throw them in and they come out the other end. If we throw them precisely, then they don't. Gone, like a skipping stone beneath the surface. The pale outweighs reality two to one. There is more pale than there is matter, and the ratio is slipping. What do you think, detective? Precisely. One of the few measurable effects of the pale 
is that it is expanding at an unknown rate. An intuitive conclusion of that development is that one day the Pale will cover everything. But this sort of talk is mostly left to extremists. Most people, and indeed most private and government sector organizations, entire civilizations and religions even, find handy ways to ignore or downplay that knowledge. I suggest you do the same. Off we go. You see the hanged man's mouth open. One and all. They say pale is death, but for the universe. Why should we just leave and leave, and the world get left behind? Yes, sweet reality. But before we do, tell me, detective, is this the first time you're hearing this? Do you really not remember anything? Then tell me, what do you think of the pale? Mm-hmm. You really didn't know. This does not spell good for the investigation, detective. If you don't know even this, then... Steal yourself, officer. Your colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi, he is competent. I checked up on him. And you also have me. I will try to assist you in any way I can. Some of that assurance is meant for herself, as much as it's meant for you. She must have a lot on the line here. Even if we have to do it one basic term at a time. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? <laughs> 